In this video, we're going to go through a couple different ways that you can set up alerts in your Power BI reports. We're going to go through how you can add some simple alerts for data changes. And we're also going to have a brief look at some of the other more configurable tools like the Power Automate or the Data Activator. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So setting data alerts is a good way to notify your users when your data or your reports reach a certain threshold that they might have set. So setting up data alerts is a pretty good way to notify your users if the data that you have in your dashboards have reached certain certain thresholds. So for example, you may want to notify your users, for example, if your sales targets have been reached or maybe when your reports have been refreshed. Power BI provides a couple of different ways that you can set this up. So if you work with a Power BI service, you might have noticed this button here, set alerts, which is probably the most obvious place where you might think you can set up alerts easily in Power BI. The limitation with this current feature, however, is that it only works for premium or fabric capacity license users. So we're going to go through it again later. And the limitation with this feature is the fact that it's limited to fabric capacity users at the moment. So we're going to cover this towards the end of this video. And I want to go through an option with you guys that you can use without having to have this fabric capacity license. And this feature is the alerts feature that you can find in the dashboards part of the Power BI service. Now dashboards is not very well named and it's a separate thing from the reports, which is what we commonly refer to as dashboards. But dashboards is a separate thing that you use in the Power BI service. And for some reason, it's the only place where you can create sort of these types of alerts. And I'm going to show you how you can do that and customize it further. So just going through this demo here. So we have a report with a bunch of visuals here, a card visual a matrix and a list of months in sales in tables. And at the moment we are in what we call a Power BI report. So this is what you'd be used to where you're creating it in Power BI desktop publishing it into the service and it becomes a report. So let's say we have the scenario of the sales and we want to track the the sales value as it data changes and we might want to notify our users or we want to be notified when this value changes over time. So to do that is very simple. The first thing that you need to do is pin this visual into a dashboard. Now I have videos in the past covering what dashboards are so I'm not gonna go too deep into it but you just click the pin icon on top of the visual itself. You can either pin it to an existing dashboard or a new dashboard. We'll just pin it to an existing dashboard. It's, it's going to be the same thing. And we'll hit pin and let's hit go to dashboard. And this is what a sort of a dashboard looks like. So from here, as far as I know, alerts only work with card visuals. So you won't find this option on the other visual types like tables, for example. So the if you click on the ellipsis icon on the card that you just pinned, you will see this option manage alerts. But uh, just to show you if if you go to any other visuals that is not a card visual, you won't get that option. So that's only for card type visuals. When you click manage alerts, you'll see that it will let you create alerts or rules for those alerts. So if you click the plus icon here, you'll see that it gives you a few different options here. Not too complicated, but fairly simple. The first few things is you can toggle the alerts, set it a title. That's because you can create multiple alerts across you know, different reports, across different cards. You can set the rules for, you know, the, it's for that measure and you can change the condition if it's above or below. You just set the value here in the threshold and then how often you want to get notified. So either at most every 24 hours or at most once an hour. So basically what this means is that when your data gets refreshed, how often do you want to get notified? Now it's 
especially useful if you're using sort of direct query reports where your data updates regularly. So that's when you would use at most once an hour. But for everyone else, you probably would want to just use at most uh, every 24 hours. You can probably just set it by default. But just bear in mind the sort of timings of when you want to get notified based on these settings. Then at the bottom here, you can see there is a tick box here, send me an email to along with a notification. I always just leave this tick box ticked and that's because that sends me an email as well. The notification that they send you is the notification in here, the notification center, which usually I don't pay attention to this. So it's actually much better if it's through email. So that's a lot more visible. Now, as you can see, the options here are fairly simple, but at the same time, fairly limited because you cannot add some more conditions or maybe just chain up some more actions based on, you know, the, the alerts that you've set up. So if you want to have a bit more customization, you will see this button, use Microsoft Power Automate to trigger additional actions to add some more customization elements into your alerts. So let's click that button and let's go to Power Automate and see what we can set up with this feature. So clicking the button takes us to the Power Automate, which is one of the tools in the sort of power suite. I guess that's what, what it's called. It's completely free as far as I've used it for the majority of things that you use. And um, it's pretty handy. So I'm gonna show you very briefly how, how you work with it, but I did cover it already in previous videos. So if you have watched my videos for a long time, I'm sure you'll be familiar with this tool. So clicking that button from Power BI automatically brings us to this section of Power Automate, which creates a, uh, a flow for us automatically where we can link up custom actions that will be triggered based on the alerts that we've set up. So we're just going to click continue from here and it will take us to this this view. Now I'm just going to switch it back to the old designer just because I'm more familiar with uh, with, with the old designer here. But the idea here is that you have a trigger and then you have an action and Power Automate lets you customize all of that in a visual manner. So that means that setting all of these up is very easy, even for business users. So the first thing that we're going to do from here is we're gonna bring up the alert ID here, which is which alert to is to be triggered. Now, nothing is showing up here because we didn't actually save the alert that we've created. So let's say, I'm just gonna create an example alert here. So let's just say we wanna get notified if it reaches four, four, 1.4 million. We'll just uh, hit save. And let's see if it's gonna, I think we just need to refresh this. Or let, let's close this and let's go back to the alerts part. So again, manage alerts. Let's follow that link. Let's click continue from here. Go back to the old designer. And from here, when we click the drop down, it should hopefully show up here. The, the trigger name is called sales. So that's the first step. So we are now monitoring for a trigger. So when a trigger happens, what do we want it to do? So as an example, let's just keep it simple for now. Let's say we just want it to send an email. So here, uh, when I click the plus button, it asks me to choose an operation, which is basically what the action, uh, what action needs to happen. So we're gonna look for a send an email, which is either of these. So you just simply click one of them and here you go. So as you can see already, it gives me a lot more customizability even just through sending email because one, it lets me choose multiple recipients, which the previous alert didn't allow us to do. Uh, you can choose a subject and a body to give your notifications a lot more flavor. So now that you know how to use the simple alerts using dashboards and using Power Automate to create some more customizable actions based on those triggers, let's now cover this feature, the set alerts feature that you would normally see in Power BI reports. So just going back to our report here, I'm just going to go back by clicking on the card, it will take us to a report here in our workspace. And you will notice that when I click set alerts, the first thing that you'll notice is that it will select one of the visuals in the report itself. You'll know that it's selected because it's highlighted. So as I click 
on other visuals it gets kind of focused on with this feature. As you'll notice, Data Activator is currently in preview. So if you're going to use it, just be aware that it is a preview feature at the moment. So let's use one of these ones. So this one is a card, for example. As you can see, you can choose which measure you want to set an alert to. You can choose the condition, which is similar to before, with a little bit more control over what conditions there are and the notification type. So a new one here is the Teams. And then at the bottom here, you can choose where you want to save your alert. So which workspace you want the, the item to be saved. Now it saves a reflex item, which is basically what the alert system is powered by. So you just need to choose which workspace you want to store that in. Now, this is the limitation of the current data activator is the fact that you need to have a fabric free trial or fabric capacity in order to take advantage of this feature, which not a lot of people will have. You might have if you have signed up for that fabric free trial, which is a perpetual license at the moment that renews every every 60 days or so. I don't have that anymore. I am a premium per user. So if you want to use this, you need to make sure that you have a premium workspace with a fabric capacity license to create something using this feature. So I've switched to another tenant here with a fabric license or fabric free trial with a workspace that is premium or, or in a trial version. So we should be able to use the data alerts segment part here. So let's click set alerts once more, as you can see, it doesn't give me a, um, a warning anymore. So we're just going to set up uh, something here. So let's say, yeah, so let's apply a filter or an alert there. Let's say let's start an alert. So we're going to choose the workspace and we're going to choose to create a new reflex item in this workspace. We're just going to call it sales template. And I'm just going to show you quickly what it creates. So let's creates the alert. Let's wait for the reflex to be created for us. Okay, so now here we are in the actual workspace. And as you can see, we have one of the reports that I have published and the reflex item that we've created, which houses the alerts that we have just set up. Now the reflex item is a byproduct of the data activator feature. And it's something that I mean to cover at some point in the future. But for now, um, you just need to understand that the reflex item lets you, or at least from what I understand, it lets you monitor things about your alerts, how many times it's been triggered. And, and I believe you can also set up sort of custom triggers and use it with Power Automate, similar to how we use the dashboards before. And that's really it for this video. I hope that's given you some options on how you can set up alerts in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so enough to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.